Oh, so what do you do? Well, I take motorcycle riders to racetracks and let them ride their bikes at 280 kilometers an hour. You do what? You can feel the wind. You can feel all of the movements of the bike and, and you're so connected to it. There's no faster way to propel a body than from acceleration on a motorcycle, even free falling from a plane. So why wouldn't people want to do that? <laughs> the feeling I get when I ride that racetrack, there is no comparison to any other activity that I ever do. I run the biggest non-competition motorcycle events group in the Southern Hemisphere. Most motorcycle trainers are failed motorcycle racers, and I guess I'm a failed motorcycle racer. So now I'm going through this reverse midlife crisis where I, I built this business based upon riding motorcycles and going fast around racetracks, and that led to me needing to know more about business, and so now I'm just as happy you know, spending the day looking at spreadsheets and figuring out the way the whole business is going to function as I am riding a bike around a racetrack. Whenever things need fixing, he's the man that does yeah. it. Give me a pen, I can't use it. Give me a spanner. <laughs> Actually, that's give, give, my you a, give you a keyboard and you could be sent to prison. He speaks very good English, he types fluent dyslexic. <laughs> that's, that's really cool. Perfect, yeah, that's, that's me. In all honesty, I can't think of a better way to make a living than to get paid to come out to racetracks, ride motorbikes, and provide the same environment for other guys to do exactly the same thing. There's really no better job for me. My father was a really troubled guy. You know, they say there's a fine line between genius and madness, and, and my father was literally a genius. He had a, a genius IQ, and, and I guess he crossed that line, you know. It was, we were waiting for lunchtime, it was like a Sunday, and uh, you know, he, um, he took his own life in the bedroom while we were all in the lounge room. Um, my mum found him. And that left her uh, pretty much penniless. So in my early mid-teens, I was living in women's shelters and halfway houses, and uh, I left home at age 16. I guess from seeing that and watching that play out, it allowed me to know what would happen if I did the same thing. It's those things that, that I got that really helped me as an adult, and now as a husband and as a father, to, to hopefully make some better decisions with that. There we go. I love my children dearly. They have fulfilled my life in ways that I've never thought possible. It's not unusual for me to be sitting there watching TV and for one of my kids to come up randomly and say, I love you, Daddy. And then take off. You know, and the moment's there for like a nanosecond. But when it's there, it's just the most beautiful thing. Karen and I work really hard to make sure that all of the stuff in life doesn't stop us from, the, from feeling and maintaining that connection. Yeah. You think what I do is physical? Yeah. I couldn't do this for like three minutes. I do this, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> to think we're going to live a life without challenges is unrealistic. So rather than avoid challenges, I think we should embrace them. I'm going to catch you. Yeah. Faith is the foundation of everything we do and think and feel. I believe that without faith in anything, there is no life, there is no activity. I ride motorcycles at extremely high speeds around racetracks. I'm a businessman, I'm a husband, I'm a father. I'm Steve Brogy, and I'm a Mormon. <laughs>